Over the past year or so, the one series that we have dove into pretty much more than anything else is what I like to call the full story of. The series where we take an individual character from a Call of Duty game and dive into their complete background, looking at where they came from and how they got to be where they are now. Upon the release of Modern Warfare 2019 this year, there's a bunch of characters that were newly added into the game, one of which is who we are going to be looking at today. Now, the character who we're going to be looking at today is actually kind of special as far as Call of Duty goes. First of all, this character is brand new to Modern Warfare 2019 in really no way whatsoever has been in any previous Call of Duty games, and on top of that, it's odd that we haven't talked about them because they are one of the main characters within Modern Warfare. On top of that, this character is really the first female lead we have ever seen in a Call of Duty game. Yes, there's been female characters, but never to the extent of the character we're looking at today. And as far as the main characters within Modern Warfare who you play as, there's really three. The first of which is Alex, the CIA agent who we've talked about previously. The second is Kyle Garrick, aka Gaz, who we've made a video on previously. But the third of which is the only female lead within the game and that is of course Farah Karim. So without further ado, let's dive in to the full story of Farah Karim. Farah Karim is originally from Yurzikstan, a Maple Leaf country made up by Infinity Ward for the events of Modern Warfare 2019. Now we do know that Yurzikstan can best be compared to Iraq because, for example, the map Crash, which was in Call of Duty 4, took place in Iraq, whereas in Modern Warfare 2019, it takes place in Yurzikstan. So essentially, Yurzikstan is a fictional version of Iraq. Now at the time of Modern Warfare, there are essentially three different forces fighting within Yurzikstan. First of all, we have Roman Barkov's forces. He is basically the Russians who are invading Yurzikstan. Secondly, you have al -Qatala. They were originally the militia that was fighting against Barkov's forces, but they went extremist, and because of that, the third forces, Yurzikstan militia, formed to fight both of them. Farah Karim is the leader of the Yurzikstan militia, currently fighting against both al -Qatala and Roman Barkov's forces. The Yurzikstan militia is secretly funded by the SAS, the SAS giving them weapons and gear to fight against these other guys. However, they are heavily at a disadvantage compared to the other forces, as their weaponry and forces are way outnumbered. Essentially, these are the good guys in Yurzikstan. However, the thing that you need to know is Farah Karim is the leader of the Yurzikstan militia. But before we dive into how that happened, we first have to understand Farah's upbringing. Mama. Please wake up, Mama. Bring the saw, we've got someone here. Get us here, please. Give her to me. Oh, God, you're bad. No! No! What? Wait! Where is my son? About halfway through the Modern Warfare campaign, you get a flashback to see the early days of Farah Karim's life. In this, you wake up in a pile of rubble next to your dead mother. After you get pulled out of the rubble, so does your mother, with a less than good outcome. After this, you find out that your brother Hadir is still at home, but the city that you're living in in Yurzikstan is under attack by Roman Barkov's forces. On your way back to the house, you encounter a raid in which some of Roman Barkov's soldiers are throwing chlorine gas. Immediately, you get inside your house and, well, someone comes in. It's only my children, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're not, you're not. 
Now luckily at this point, Farah is still a trained assassin at the age of like seven, and with the help of her brother and a pair of scissors that has fallen onto the ground, you are able to take out this full grown man. But still, upon leaving the house to try to get away from Roman Barkov's soldiers, you encounter, in my opinion, one of the saddest scenes ever in a Call of Duty game. <laughs> Baba? My love. You have to get up. Ah, I can't. I can't go with you. What do we do? You survive. Whatever it takes. Daddy, I love you. <laughs> now at this point you have to realize in the past 10 minutes, Barkov's soldiers have both killed the mother and father of Hadir and Farah. Just like that, it is just the two of them. So after the death of the father, the two of them try to escape through the gas with the help of the gas masks that they have found inside the house. And they actually manage to make it a fair distance before coming upon one of Roman Barkov's convoys. Their new plan is to get one of their guns, steal a car, and get away from the city. This is how it goes. You think I won't find you? You did it! <coughs> you saved us! Let's get out of here! I'll drive! I need you! Let go! Let go! Let go! <coughs> So you are the little devils that killed my soldiers. So for the next 10 years of Farah's life, from the year 1999 to 2009, Farah and Hadir were held captive in a absolutely terrible, terrible prison. They were not given water, they were fed slop, and on top of all of that, they were constantly waterboarded for information about the Urzikstan militia. Now, somehow through all of this, Farah from inside the prison managed to be running the Urzikstan militia. It's never explained exactly how she does this, but she does use a code name. Who is Karim? Now, I don't know how Roman Barkov never picked up on this after years of being prisoner, but Karim is obviously Farah and Hadir's last name. So using their last name, they are running the Urzikstan militia from inside the prison. Like I said before, it's never explained to us exactly how they did it, but somehow they got contact with the outside. And speaking of which, on this fateful day, they were actually able to mount an escape from the prison. And just as it appears that they are going to get caught, someone breaks in from the roof and you discover that Farah was not only in contact with the Urzikstan militia, but also the SAS. <laughs> Who's Commander Karim? I'm Karim. We got your message. Lieutenant John Price. Where are the others? In there. Straight ahead. Stay close. Well, right, let's go, boys. 
So after being saved by Lieutenant John Price, and Farah manages to rescue her brother, they then escape and are given some munitions by the SAS and sent back to Yurzikstan to once again fight in the war. This brings us back to 2019 when Farah is once again introduced to us by Alex. So 2019 is when the events of Modern Warfare actually take place, and in this, we're going to start to move things along a little bit quicker. First of all, you're introduced to Farah when Alex is sent to Yurzikstan after some chlorine gas is stolen from him. They don't know whether it's the Russians or Alcatala who have taken the gas, and Farah decides to fight along Alex. Their first mission is to move occupants from the middle of Yurzikstan outwards. In other words, taking out some Russian forces. After this is done successfully, their next mission together is removing moving the Russians from an airbase. This is done alongside Hadir and using some RC planes to blow up some Russians. After this, in a conversation with Alex and Farah, we get to hear exactly how she feels about the gas that we are trying to hunt down and how it's affected her throughout her life. The invaders of my country have no regard for human life. The gas kills all things, even food and our gardens. If you use these tactics, you are my enemy. No exceptions? None. Alcatala has given my people a bad name, and we have paid dearly for their crimes. I want to see the wolf punished. I'll make sure you're at the embassy for the handoff to Price. Now, that statement is going to come into a play in a big way later on in the story, but until then, the next mission where Farah is there is at the U.S. Embassy inside Yurzikstan. After Alex tracked down and captured the wolf, they bring him to the U.S. Embassy, which is currently under attack by Alcatala forces. Their next mission is to extract the wolf safely. And, well, it doesn't really go according to plan. They manage to get him out of the embassy and into another safe house, where Alcatala forces manage to, once again, break him out. He's gone. They breached the wall. Fucking hell. They got him, Captain. We will find him. Hadir, get your team to the crossroads. Bring everything you've got. Now, luckily, there is only one way out of Yurzikstan, the Road of Death. So that is where we go next with Hadir and Farah to stop the wolf from getting out of Yurzikstan, and in this, we get in a pretty big fight. But in this fight, we find out that it actually wasn't Alcatala that stole the gas in the first place. It is actually Hadir. And this is why I said that line that we saw from before was so important, because at this point, Farah knows that Hadir is using chlorine gas, and because of this, she essentially disowns him as a brother. My brother always wanted to fight without rules. Now he's broken all of them. Hadir went north. He was picked up by AQ fighters in the foothills. Voluntarily or by force? We don't know. I'm sorry, Farah. Your brother is a terrorist. Now, in trying to track down Hadir, Alex and Farah end up being able to kill the wolf and defusing the bomb that is attached to him. Now, after this, Farah pretty much isn't in the rest of the game. She's not there until the final mission of the game. After this, Captain Price and Kyle Garrick track down Hadir, and upon doing so, find out the location of Roman Barkov's gas facility. The final mission is the entire crew storming the gas facility, and, well, this is where shit kind of hits the fan. The first part of the plan is to get inside the gas facility, plant explosives, and blow it up remotely, which they do for the most part, but once they get there and plant the explosives, the remote detonator is broken. So a really big conversation happens between Alex and Pharaoh. Clear! What happened? Detonator's fucked. It's dead. I'll go in there. And do what? Ignite the furnace. You'll never get away in time. I know what I'm doing. Farah, listen to me. No, you listen to me. Because of this poison, my people have known something worse than war. I did not come this far to turn back. I'm not asking you to turn back. I'm asking you to give me the order. I won't do that. Commander? Please. I am not your CO. Then who is? Because someone needs to light this fire and someone needs to kill Barkov. And you can't do both. I've been on assignment my whole life. This is what I believe in. 
Give me the order. You are a freedom fighter, Alex. You're a born leader, Farah. Say the word. Go. Yes, ma'am. After the explosives have been planted, it appears as though Roman Barkov has made an escape in a helicopter. Little does he know, Farah has other plans. Barkov is dead. Roger that. Alex, charge is set? Affirmative, sir. Alex. I'm not getting out of here. Let's do this. Thank you. And that is pretty much the end of Farrah's story. Now, an interesting part of her story is we don't really know what's next for her. For several of the other characters like Gaz, we know that he'll be joining Task Force 141 going forward. But as far as Farrah goes, all we know is that she is going to be returning to Yurzikstan. Mother Russia would approve. Where to? Urzikstan. Home. So, as the end of the game happens, we don't really know what's next for Farah. All we know is she is returning home to Urzikstan to probably fight once again alongside the militia. Since then, Farah has not been mentioned. In the ending cutscene with Kate Laswell and Captain Price while they discuss Task Force 141, Farah was never mentioned. In all of the subsequent cutscenes revolving around Spec Ops, Farah was never mentioned. For all we know, this could be the end of her story, but we really won't know until the next Modern Warfare games. So if you have any theories, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Also, as always, these videos take a really long time to put together, do all the editing, so if you do enjoy these type of videos and want to see more, make sure you hit that like button, and if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you turn notifications on. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, peace out.